Hello and welcome to Surf All Day A1A. This is a introduction to making the most out of what's at the end of your street. If you live near the ocean, I say first step is to learn the sandbars and how they move and shift across time and conditions at your local spot. But let's take a look at what we have right now, right here for conditions. Well, Hurricane Ada Swell has quickly faded, but still present. I would say there are sets still in the chest to potentially head high at better spots and sandbars conditions, but I don't expect that to last long as it pulls up past the Carolinas very quickly. The winds in that storm are now down to 20 miles an hour, which is not much. So what you see is mostly let me get down a little closer. Most of the close out conditions. You can see how shallow that sandbar is where he's standing. All the sand has been shifted. Not all. A lot of the sand has been shifted from that outside sandbar to the inside bar. So just crazy shallow, which sets up a real close out situation on a lot of the sandbars along Florida beaches. Thanks for joining the stream. But there are corners. There's corners on the inside. Now this is closer to, uh, this is transitioning from high to low, so it's a dropping tide. Typically that takes a little bit of juice out, but this is a groundswell condition, certainly. You see how long the lines are. Big closeouts. You see that one had a corner. So I think it's really about today either finding the corner or waiting for the bigger set on an outside sandbar as the tide drops. Certainly some of these sets will show on the outside sandbars if you know where they are. Now, I'm down here swimming every day with Jack, almost, most days. Water's still really, really warm, by the way. It's good, uh, at least 78 degrees, maybe 80. Really nice, and so, we're just a lot of days just drifting down the whole way just into all the little troughs and feeling where all the sandbars are so i know there's a big shallow sandbar here that the edge of it comes out right about there somewhat and which is why i believe i see you see these the shoulder on the waves happening right here you know so you, you're aware of where the drop-offs are also for fishing whatever you know and, and you could go down any stretch of beach here for hundreds of miles and do the same thing it's just shifting sandbars where they setting up you know and look to see where the corners are and you can start to really get a place wired uh, this place i've been surfing here at the end of my street for you know, over 20 years 25 years and uh, so i feel as if it's almost instinctual at this point seeing these cycles repeated over and over and over and where we've had heavy swell like this like we have for the last oh hey the last few days, well, last week, really, week and a half, uh, from Tropical Storm Ada, it does this. It pushes all the sand in, but we've actually got an adequate amount of sand on the beach here. It was recently renourished, so some of that's feeding the outside bars, which actually is great for surfing and also protects the beach as well. Look at that. Is that a corner? Yeah, yeah that was a one maneuver, maybe two if you're clever and in the perfect spot type of wave. So, as you can see, not really going to be competing for much, really, anywhere up and down this whole coast at this point. The circus is somewhat left town. Last night was an all-time awesome high tide. Like I actually saw three little barrels spit, which is, uh, you know, not a common thing in Central Florida, as you might imagine, but last night it was doing that. And then today, you know, fading swell, certainly quickly. But my plan is to go out and uh, get some of these little shoulders. I'm just going to hit that inside, and then I'm going to be always watching, though, the outside to see if that outside sandbar starts to light up. And there are a couple edges of sandbars that I'm very familiar with from swimming over them and feeling with my feet mostly. So I want to be right at those spots. But that's the thing with learning your sandbar. You can try to learn it from from and how your sandbars behave at your local beach, whether it's Florida, California, Hawaii, wherever, is uh, you know really to get in there and swim over the sandbars too, if possible. Feel them out and really get to know them in a more in-depth way, and you'll end up scoring many more waves, in my opinion. There's that corner again. Uh, 
Uh, big set on the outside. Maybe these guys will end up getting one. Are they positioned correctly? Uh, there you go. Well, that second wave had possibility, but as you can see, you gotta just pop up instantly and make the drop. And uh, yeah, no, no slowness in that approach is gonna work out here much, but you can see the lack of power in the waves too. Yep, so that's all right. Plenty of other things to do when the surf gets smaller, but I'm predicting that it's gonna get much smaller. But we'll see, you just never know. Thanks for watching Surf All Day M1A. If you want to support the channel, use the links in the description. I've got some links to some cool surfboards in there. Uh, soft tops you can get right online that run right around 300 bucks, which by the way, a soft top would be a perfect, a, a small soft top would be the perfect solution for today. And this is the part of the video where I'm gonna go into talking a little bit about the equipment I'm using this afternoon, this morning. Uh, so yeah, small soft soft top board like you can widely get on the internet for about 300 bucks nowadays is one of the best possible possible options. Rugged, you don't have to worry too much about getting hit in the head with it on days like slammy days. Novel. Here's what I'm brought. Okay, now I use this this larger bag to contain these boards. Because the width, now this is not a soft top, but this is something like the idea of those soft tops, I meaning the, the shape is, but it's, you'll see. It is a beauty and it can be perfect for today. Yep. Look at that. And it is extra wide but still short enough by the great Bruce Reagan which is to me the best shaper in Florida and it is a 6-0 by the way no offense to you other shapers I just you know Bruce Bruce's work quite well and there are the dimensions I'll read them out just so in case you can't see it clearly. 6-0, 16. say 16 and 1 eighths. And I don't know what the width is. I can't see what the width is. But it is a 6-0. So it's short enough. Certainly. And then for the setup, I absolutely love these fins. These are what they call the stretch fins. And on this board, nice and short, these are just drivey, fun fins that hold in the face of the wave. But I uh, really like them. I think they're a little bit more flexible than some, but certainly it's a good setup. Real basic. Well, I would call this fun shape. The uh, cool thing is I had, had the carbon fiber put along the rail here because I always ding up here, which has been very helpful. Yeah, I probably should have gone with that on the nose and the tail as well because that's the other area I end up always annihilating is the nose and the tail. But this board is going to allow me to pop up very quickly on these waves and get in front of sections and also rapidly paddle to where the peak is breaking because you can see like it is shifty a bit but the, it's happening in certain spots but what I mean is when it comes in within that spot it's shifty so the ability to get just in the right position is the difference between getting you know no maneuver potential one maneuver or two today would be my estimation and there you go All right, well, hey, in the comments, let me know what equipment you were using during this hurricane, what you think about waves like boards like the one I just showed you. 
if you've ever surfed on some of those soft tops, you know, anything like that. Get on it before it's gone. Let the FOMO be your bro bro.